Since England fans first started singing It's Coming Home, it has never come home. In fact, football has only come home once ever and that was way back in 1966. Since then, it has been poor officiating like in 1986 at the World Cup, hard luck like in 1998 and 2010 at the World Cup and near misses like in 2018 at the World Cup and 2021 at the Euros. We could give all sorts of excuses for the lack of success at international competitions for more than half a century now, but they would hardly hold water because the simple fact is that the three Lions should actually be doing much better than they have been. And so many things could be blamed for these underwhelming outings. The FA, bad officiating, poor coaching, lack of zest from the players, poor decision making on and off the pitch, lots of things. But what if the problem is actually with the country's league, the Premier League? How could the Premier League be ruining the England national team, you ask? Well, come along with us. First of all, the league is not the same anymore, not since Roman Abramovich entered the scene in the early 2000s. The Russian businessman showed how easy it is to fast-track your success. He proved that you could buy your way into the European elite and after him, we began to see that happen more frequently. Chelsea and Man City have been able to successfully do this and we are now currently watching Newcastle do it in real time. And these insane injections of funds don't just affect the club in question, it affects the clubs around them too because we have seen clubs like Liverpool and Manchester United spend an insane amount of money on superstar players in order not to be left behind by these big spend spending clubs around them. Names like Darwin Nunes, Paul Pogba, Virgil van Dijk, Alisson and Anthony quickly come to mind. And what's the common theme for all these players? None of them is from England. And yeah, you could argue that big money has also been spent on English players in recent times like Harry Maguire, Jadon Sancho and Jackie Grealish. But one thing stands out, the big money signings from abroad seem to often do better than their counterparts from England. This means that the players themselves will have to look inward and ask themselves some vital questions because who else can we blame for players failing to live up to expectations after big money has been spent on them while their counterparts from all over the world rise to the pressure? And there's also one other thing to learn from here. Players from other countries are way more nomadic than English players and they've benefited from that over time. Even players from countries with developed leagues that could compete with the Premier League have seen some of their finest players travel abroad to gain experience elsewhere. A bunch of Spain squad which dominated international football between 2008 and 2012 played abroad at one point or another. Mostly the Premier League as a matter of fact. PK, Fabregas, David Silva, Pepe Reina, Torres, Mata all played in the Premier League at one point or another with Spain's golden years of 2008 to 2012. Even though many of them ended up heading back to play in Spain, they surely gained a lot from that exposure. We could say the same thing for Germany's 2014 World Cup winning squad which had Kadira, Ozil, Schürrle, Podolski, Klose, Mertesacker and Mustafi all playing outside Germany at the time. Contrast this with England squads to the last three World Cups which had all their players playing their trade in the UK at the time, all of them. The truth is, no matter how good your league is, your players will surely always benefit from international exposure. Being exposed to different styles of play and different approaches to the game could definitely come in handy in competitions where you have to face different styles from different countries. If the German, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese and even South American players have a good understanding of your style of play due to having played in your league and you know nothing about theirs because your players refuse to travel, then you're only putting yourself at a huge disadvantage on the international stage. Age. And this over-patriotism transcends just the players, it reaches as high up as the FA as well. Their obsession with hiring ex-England internationals as managers could be one of the things costing the country success on the biggest stage. There's nothing wrong with hiring foreign managers to bring in new ideas to the team. After all, to date, no English manager has ever won the Premier League and it seems unlikely that any will do in the next few years, with the challengers all being led by coaches from abroad. But before you say it, yes, we know. Gareth Southgate has done better than the two foreign managers England have hired, being able to lead the three lines to the semi-final of the World Cup and the final of the Euros. So even though his English successes were largely underwhelming, he sort of makes up for it. And we'll have to back him up and see if he can finally bring it home this time around. Anyway, if we were to suggest some solutions to the problems that seem to have been plaguing the three lines on the international stage, the first would be for the English players to leave their comfort zone and go and explore other leagues. Big thumbs up to Jude Bellingham, Tammy Abraham and Fikayo Tomori among others who are currently plying their trades in Germany and Italy. The England squad could definitely benefit from more exposure like this. Also, these big Premier League clubs need to have better academies so that there's an easy transition from just being a great talent to actually being a great footballer. 
We saw how much the Barcelona Academy contributed to Spain's success between 2008 and 2012. Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, Pique, Puyol, Pedro and Fabregas were all products of the famed La Masia and they were all integral parts of that ultra-successful national team. There is one last solution, one which was proposed by former FA chairman Greg Dyke in 2015, the homegrown player rule. It's as simple as it sounds, more homegrown players in every squad in the Premier League. The aim of this rule is to help build the national team, and more specifically, like Greg himself said, to help England win the 2022 World Cup. Well, we only have to now sit back and see how well that worked out. But we're a bit conflicted about this one, so we want you to help us out. We think England might have a lot of problems, but a shortage of talent has never been one of them. Each time the final squad list for a tournament drops, there's always about five or six really fine talents that everyone says could have been called up for England. So is that really the problem, or was the FA just focused on the wrong thing there? Let us know what you think. Also, if you think you know the reason why it's still yet to come home for England and a possible solution for the national team, let us know in the comments. Finally, we would like your predictions on how far you think England will go in Qatar. Bombard us guys, we'll be down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.